This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television for educational and non commercial use only. It's a world where computers read our thoughts and emotions. Three teams of UC San Diego researchers are pioneering a new field called brain computer interface. Walk. Bruce Kelly hopes the new research will help keep him mobile as Parkinson's disease progresses. The degenerative disorder can make Kelly's legs freeze up, especially in narrow spaces. These white columns in the motion capture lab at the supercomputer center simulate an elevator. Freezing episode during the turn. UC San Diego cognitive scientists Virginia DeSa and Howard Poisner are using an EEG cap to monitor Kelly's brain. The 64 sensors on his scalp read electrical signals. The idea with the Parkinson's patients is to try to detect from the EEG signal, so from the voltage measured at the scalp, whether they're about to have a freezing episode, so whether they're about to have freezing of gait. The future application would be then if we can detect that, we can present visual and or auditory cues that would help them overcome that freezing of gait. Parkinson's patients are known to very heavily rely on external visual or auditory cues in order to guide their movement. So they may be unable to initiate a movement. You put chalk marks down on the floor, they can see where to place their feet and then they can begin to move. The research team is testing 10 people with Parkinson's. The ultimate goal is to develop a portable EEG device that could prevent their legs from freezing in the first place. Sensors could be embedded in a baseball cap or a headband. Virtual reality glasses would display visual images to guide the patient. Emerging technology could help retrain the brain and get people like Kelly out of a pinch. I doing good. With Brain Computer Interface, or BCI, a computer not only reads brain activity, but sends signals to an external device, like a wheelchair or a robot, to execute an action. Now, we're not reading people's thoughts as they're, you know, uh, uh, thinking about Shakespeare's lines. Now, that's a long way off. But reading their motor cortex thoughts about how they want to move in which directions and so forth, that's very doable. Upstairs from Poisoner's lab, Saping Zhang is developing ultra-portable BCI hardware from headbands to helmets at the Swartz Center for Computational Neuroscience. So basically we put 16 sensors on the subject head. And as you can see, this setup takes about one minute. No gel or wires are needed for this prototype. 16 spring-loaded electrodes read the user's brain waves and send those signals to a Bluetooth-enabled phone or tablet. Zheng says wireless headsets could help the general population with everyday activities like driving. So if a device can detect and track the cognitive states, in this case, for instance, drowsiness of the drivers, and then decode the signals, trying to give the feedback or the warning signals to the subject when they fall into sleep on the wheel, and then we can save lives. So you as a subject, you need to look at numbers one at a time. Zhang also helped develop a BCI application for people who can't physically dial the phone. A researcher demonstrates with a headband containing four electrodes. He can call a phone number simply by looking at numbers on the screen one at a time. His brain signals are then sent to the cell phone for an automatic dial. Tucked away in another corner of the supercomputer center, musicians show how brain-computer interface can read and express emotion. Scott McCaig is the composer and violinist. There's a cellist, a flutist, and a so-called brainist. You're playing the brain. <laughs> That's Tim Molin. The cognitive science graduate student focuses on one of five distinct emotional states, feeling it fully inside his body. 
As Mullen enters into the feeling of shyness, 64 sensors on his EEG cap send brain signals to the MobiLab control room. Software translates his mood into a bass tone, which comes through the loudspeakers. This feeling is of one who is uncertain, quiet, shy, and sensitive. The musicians then play the piece that corresponds with this ground tone. The audience would know whether it worked by seeing whether the description that was given of that state, like shy and sensitive, matched the quality of the sound that came out. In this rehearsal, it worked proving that a computer can not only decode basic thoughts, but primal emotions. And the brainist could communicate his feelings through music without even lifting a hand. <laughs>